Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're going to talk all about the 10 things that I wish I knew when I started my window cleaning business. So maybe you know them, maybe you don't, but either way, hang out with me and stay tuned for WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? I'm glad that you have uh, joined us. If it's your first time, have a look around. Hopefully you dig it. We have hundreds of episodes, literally hundreds of episodes for you to catch up on. Binge away, my friends. If you're new and in business, I hope it helps you. If you're old and in business, I hope it helps you. Either way, I hope you uh, have fun. Either way. Uh, And if you have uh, ordering supplies, if you would like to order supplies, (laughs) <laughs> Let me be your rep. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. It's how I make my cheddar, man or ma'am. Uh, let me be your guy. Uh, shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. If you got to get a piece of paper, go ahead, get a piece of paper. I'm going to read it one more time for you. Ready? It's 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone, so shoot me a text. Let me know everything's in my cart, man. Put the order through. Or if you want me to put the order in, I can enter everything into your cart. If you want to talk, if you want to chat, if anything, let me know. That's my cell. Uh, doesn't cost you anything extra, and it does help me out to let me live. <laughs> let me live, man. Uh, also, if you haven't yet already gotten it, I wish I'm prepared. i got to lean over and get it. But if you haven't gotten your American <laughs> Window Cleaner magazine, what? Why the heck not? Uh, make sure to go get your subscription. It's uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's at awcmag.com. It is literally a window cleaning magazine. Look at that. I mean, there's like posters in here, by the way, if you know who Gianno is. Poster in that one. Super dope. And, of course, the sticker sheets are in that. And you get one every single, every single uh, month. Every single month, you get a sticker sheet. If you want to buy stickers, too, they're available. Go check that out, awcmag.com. Whew. Well, anyway. Uh, if you're still here through my long, long intro, I definitely, definitely appreciate it. And uh, I thought this would be kind of interesting because there's some certain, not even rules, but just like stuff that I didn't know when I started that if I would have known or could go back and tell myself now, I probably wouldn't believe myself. But more importantly, they would help me immensely immensely. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I, I know a lot of you have been in business for a long time and you're just submersing yourself in window cleaning, which is absolutely ridiculously awesome. By the way, what's up to all of you? Um, but uh, some of you may be new and uh, I know some of these things are going to be like, yeah, that's you, but not me. Like there's this joke that goes in the industry that like, yeah, your customers can do that, but my customers are different. My business is different. My area is different. It's not. It's absolutely not. There might be like minuscule, like, oh, I can charge, you know, 125 bucks an hour, uh, but I can only charge $80 an hour. There may be things like that, depending. It's too few and far between. By the way, if you're under like 75 a man hour, somewhere in that, you're not charging enough. No matter where you are, you're just not charging enough. Charge more. But anyway, here's some 10 things that I uh, wish I would have known basically. And by the way, just on a side note, if you've ever seen somebody start a business a second time, that's why they can accelerate so much faster is because they know things like this. And now you're knowing things like this and hopefully it's going to help you uh, blow your business up. And by the way, if there's anything you want to add to the list, go to YouTube and this is uh, YouTube or podcast. But on YouTube, you can comment, go ahead and tell me the things you wish you would have known uh, if they're different than my list. But the number 10 thing, the just uh, one of the things I wish I would have known is that uh, don't do free stuff. Now, when I started business, this may not be all of you, when I started business, every time I always just had that like poverty mentality, right? Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're paying this much. I got to do a bunch of, well, I'll also change those light bulbs and they'll change that thing and let me, uh, and I always wanted to do so much free stuff because I wanted to add value. Now, There's nothing wrong with adding free stuff, but if somebody says, oh, by the way, I want you to uh, pressure wash my patio, you go, oh, man, not a problem. That's going to add about 99 bucks to the total. Like, don't feel bad for charging. Now, let me put this out there. 
I'm just some dummy with a microphone and a cardboard wall behind me. It's not really cardboard. It's fancier than that. It's like chipboard. Uh, but uh, So I'm nobody, right? Do you how you do you. Don't listen to me necessarily. But if you are in business to be a business, then your time is money. Now, if I do something and it takes me an hour and I charge 75 bucks an hour, if I do something that takes two hours, I can't charge $75 and make that make sense, right? At that point, you're stepping over dollars to make pennies, right? So my big thing was that when people would ask me to do extra stuff, when I was there, they'd be like, oh, could you do, the, oh, you got those ladders up, could you change those light bulbs? Like, if it's gonna take me a second and not really change my timing, I'm not gonna do it, but oh yeah, hey, we change light bulbs for sure, I change all those light bulbs, add like 20 bucks to the, the bill. Like, if you're in the checkout line of a grocery store, and bleep, bleep, they're, scanning everything and you take a pack of gum and you set it down there they're not gonna be like oh yeah you paid for everything else don't worry about that pack of gum you put the pack of gum down and you're okay with paying for it that's what people are doing they're telling you they need something else done and they're okay paying for it i was very guilty in the beginning of um doing too much for free to try to justify it so don't do that don't do free stuff unless you want to do all the free stuff you want to but People are absolutely okay with paying to do it, even if it's a couple bucks. I'd rather get an extra $10, because that's going to be like another eight minutes of work, right? So don't do free stuff, if you can help it. Uh, another one is delegate to specialists. Now, um, I was very guilty in the beginning of being cheap. What? Right? Uh, I know we all are. But I thought, man... I can do the taxes, I can do the payroll, I can do the QuickBooks, I can do the invoicing, I can do the stuff at packing, I can do the uh, work it's, and eventually you realize not only does it not make sense to do that, but you're paying so much more in losses than you are to just have somebody do that. Having somebody do your taxes, an entire year of taxes, they're going to find things you don't know about. They're going to find deductions, and they're going to ask you questions, and they're going to put stuff in, and they're going to make sure you get more money than you personally would have ever done yourself. And you know it's done right, so you're not going to get audited, knock on wood, right? All of that fun stuff, and it costs you a couple bucks because they're the specialist. You're paying them for their knowledge. If you do it, it's going to take you 10 times longer because now you got to figure stuff out. Well, I just do QuickBook, or what is that? Uh, Quicken, no, what's the taxes? H&R Block, whatever those are. TurboTax? I just do TurboTax. Oh my gosh. You're doing that wrong. I'm telling you it's cheaper to do it through somebody. Payroll is another one. I know we talk about this all the time, but I started using a payroll service to pay my people. That's so smart. I pay a couple percent more, literally a couple percent more, and they handle everything. It frees me up to do something else. We talked about time delegation last time, not last time, a few times ago. And we talked about what if I sell a business or a, a, I sell a commercial customer or a residential or I do something and I'm bringing in new work. What's the cost and the loss that I'm bringing to the company? And it's huge. If it takes me days, I'm going to do my taxes. It takes me a week. That is a week of lost wages, lost time, lost everything. Lost gain over the next 10 years, the amount of work that I lost by not being out there selling is in the tens of thousands of dollars. Not one accountant or tax person anywhere is charging you $10,000 to do your tax for the year. And you're going to make save more money. They're doing it right. So do it. Payroll, taxes, anything that you can delegate to someone, even calls. Like if you're not answering calls and you know it's just a lot of small talk, get a call service. They're literally charging a dollar or two a minute to talk to people and you don't have to it's it's a no-brainer especially as you get bigger and more efficient you have to delegate so that's another one i would go back and tell myself stop being cheap you're not really being cheap you're spending more another one is gear is ridiculously important now let me go ahead and do a little asterisk i am a rep a salesperson a salesman with windowcleaner.com. That's my job, is to sell stuff, right? Now, if you've ever talked to me, and I hope most of you have, 
But I really, really, really don't sell things. Like, when you go, hey, what should I get? I'm not like, well, you need this Corvette. Uh, I'm going to tell you, like, let's talk about what you need. And I'm going to give you a bunch of best options. This is what I would like, but here's other options, right? I'm a big fan of not spending money just to spend money. It doesn't make sense. You can spend money. I, you don't need help with that. But maybe the guidance side, that's where I come in. So as that side step, I am a salesman. So a lot of you are like, well, of course, he always talks about product. And I do because I, I'm so passionate, if you will, about the, 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 the having the gear, right? Okay, let me, let me go into this. Um, when I first started out, I was like a lot of people. I went to Home Depot, Lowe's. I got like my first little starter kit was the Ettore one in a bag. And then I needed extra rubber. I'm like, oh my gosh, they sell it at Lowe's and Home Depot and I'm buying it. All of a sudden, I have this hodgepodge of crap that is not designed to work every day. It's residential grade stuff, right? Extension poles and everything else. I'm trying to find towels that work. I got bath towels and everything else is ridiculous and you look like a buffoon. And I just didn't know that the right equipment was there. I didn't know that spending money on the right equipment, even though a squeegee or channel or anything simple may cost a couple bucks more. It's going to last you 10 times as long and be reliable. Remember, reliability is money. If you have something that doesn't break or is less likely to break or last longer or all that fun stuff, there's no downtime. I'm making more money because I'm using that tool. Gear is ridiculously important. Now, I'm also going to, of course, talk about the uh, the the dreaded water fed because I do really, really like that. But when you start getting into equipment like that, it is absolutely mind-blowing the difference. So having good squeegees, having good rubber, changing your rubber regularly, that's all stuff that's super important to me. I would go back and tell myself, don't be cheap. Stop buying cheap stuff. You're going to buy three times before you buy the right stuff for the fourth time, and you've just spent twice to three times as much now because you got all this extra stuff. Like, just buy good stuff right away. Remember, our industry is not, you know, we don't fix Ferraris where every tool we have is $10,000. It's cheap. Buying a new squeegee costs you like 30 bucks. A good one, right? I mean, yes, there's trad poles, which, by the way, the trad poles, phenomenal. Full carbon fiber trad pole. But you're talking 200 bucks for a pole? Yeah, in the realm of poles, that's expensive, but that pole will last you forever. There's a three-year warranty on tubes. Like, something like that, it takes so long in your business to actually understand that gear is important. Good gear. Obviously, if you won the lottery yesterday, it'd be really easy. So I know, I'm not the ones trying to spend your money. I'm just saying gear is super important. So keep that in mind. Good gear equals good business, I'm telling you. Another one is um, kind of on a side bit that a lot of you know, but a lot of you don't know. I've had uh, probably in the past week, maybe three people actually say it. That's why I put it on the list. But you do not, you do not, you do not wash towels or scrubber sleeves with any type of detergent, laundry soap, fabric softener, bounce sheets, nothing, nothing. You put it in hot water, run it through, put it in the dryer, air dry, no bounce, no anything. People go, well, how does it get clean? There's soap already in there. It's been absorbing soap that you use in your solution. I need the dirt to be out of it. I don't need it to look brand new. And you know equipment. When you first buy it, it's all bright and white. And by the way, the dumbest thing ever you can have is a white scrubber, but a lot of companies do. It's not going to look new, but I want it to be clean. And I don't want to leave marks on the window. If you're using towels and you put bounce sheets in or maybe your wife put bounce sheets in because you didn't tell her not to or there's detergent in there, oh, this will get cleaner if I put a little, I'll just put a little bit. That gets embedded into the towel. That is literally why you smell your clothes and they smell fresh, right? Because it's in your fabric. That's why shirts after time start getting kind of weird feeling. They don't feel fresh like a new one, right? Certain areas are getting caked with kind of soaps and things. Now... When you're on a clean window and you go like this to detail, you're leaving a streak of like greasy residue on the window. That's because you're putting detergent, uh, you're using bounce sheets, you're using something in there. It should just be water. Anyway, that's your public service announcement. The more you know. Do you remember that? <laughs> no soap and towels. No soap and towels. Um, another one that I am uh, really, it's so simple but I don't 
think that I knew this for a bunch of years, is that easier equals faster. Now, the fancier word for easier is efficient. Something that's more efficient is easier. It's faster. Efficient. Fast. When you have something that's easier, it goes faster. Now, when you can work faster, that means you make more money. There's one thing that I wish that I would have kind of understood the concept a little bit better. But if I have a job and I'm charging $200 for that job, if I get it done in two hours, it's $100 an hour. Good math. If I get it done in one hour, it's $200 an hour. I just made more money by not making more money. I made more money per hour by working faster. If I can work easier, not kill myself, I'm going to automatically work faster. I can get more done if I'm not struggling to do it, if I'm not burning myself out, if I don't need to take all these breaks. Easier equals faster. Efficiency equals more money. It's a big, big, big thing. So this is, you know, I always tell people to start off with like a 12-inch squeegee. It's easy to get that fanning down, right? But going from a 12 then to an 18, you got these big commercial ones. Now you're using an accelerator, right? Because it's on a pole. You're going so much faster, less detailing, right? Some people are still not using hook towels. Some people use microfibers and it takes them 10 swipes longer to get all the water off because their microfibers suck. Use a hook towel. It's once, one swipe and it absorbs it, right? All these little things create easier working, make it faster working. Efficiency equals money. Right, so we go back to the equipment, obviously you have good equipment, but get the equipment that's the right size, right? 12 is kind of small, 10 is kind of small, go big, go to an 18. Put new rubbers on your, your channels. If you put new rubbers on your channels, you're going to have a smoother draw, you're going to take off more water, you're going to just do so much better with that window. Better, faster, more efficient equals more money. Doing that every single time is always more um, better. Or better. Oh, anyway, if I can put people closer together on a route, or if I can schedule people closer, make more money. If I have, okay, I go to this other town, XYZ town, and I don't do a ton in XYZ town, but every Thursday is my XYZ town day. I do enough that I can fill a day a week there. If you do that, you're never going to have to leave and come back and leave and go back and always be driving. You're going to save more time and you're going to get more work done. You're going to be working easier and you're going to be making more money. There's so many things like these internal audits we can do for our companies. This is a big one. Faster equals more money. Efficiency equals money. So see where you're lacking and what you can be more efficient at. If you can be more efficient, then you're going to make more money. Another one, and it's the dreaded water fed. If you're not using water fed, I'm not here to tell you that you have to because it's a tool. You don't have to. Like if you've never used an Unger Ninja or you've never used a Ettore Super Channel in an Unger Handle, hmm, best combination of wide body out there. If you've never done that, that's okay. Maybe try it someday, right? That's where water fed. People think that because people talk about water fed, they're trying to change the industry or whatever. It's not. Water fed works, it's science. Don't tell me it doesn't work because you did something wrong. Don't tell me that, oh, the company before me that I got there, uh, they did it and the people are like, I don't want a water pole. That's because they did it wrong. When somebody says, I don't want a water pole, because they don't know what it's really called, I'm always like, well, uh, that is what we use. That's our main thing. For the insides, we will use squeegees, but we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee and a seven-day rain guarantee, so there's nothing to worry about. You don't go to a mechanic and say, hey, you can only use snap-on tools. I do not want you to use Craftsman, which Craftsman's probably not even big enough to be in a mechanic shop, but you know what I'm saying. I don't say that. And if I did, the mechanic would be like, no, I use the tools I have in my toolbox. Like, well, the last guy used snap-on stuff, it was garbage. Okay, well, I'm not, like, understand from another point of view, if you don't understand how water-fed works, that's why people say it doesn't work. They go, oh, it doesn't work. That doesn't work for me. Not in my area. Nope, not my water. It's science. It is science. Don't say that because you're 100% wrong. It is the exact same thing that's in every single car wash when you have the spot free rinse at the end. That's an RO membrane. It's doing the same exact thing. Don't tell me your water is so hard it doesn't work. That's not that's not the truth, right? Water fed is a game changer. 
that is what I would go back and tell myself because it took me a good two years before I got into water fed and I got into it wrong. I was like, ah, I'm going to be cheap and get a DI tank. You guys know the story if you've talked to me, but I blew through um, a three quarter cube of resin in about seven hours. It's like $180 worth of resin. And I was like, this is horrible. This is stupid. I wasted all this money on this gear. I bought all used crap. So the pole was garbage. The system was ranky. You know, like, and I put it away for another six months before I bought an RODI system. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, right? Water fed works when it's done right. You can't splash and dash. You can't just go, oh, look, magic wand. It didn't work right. People call me all the time and they're like, hey, uh, a lot of people are just trying to figure out what can I do better. But some people are like, hey, this system doesn't work. I'm like, what? And I'm like, I did all the whole thing. I had a lady one time and I, I wish I could see her again uh and i wouldn't even apologize i just anyway she went and she had a big hospital she was doing and she bought a big water fed system she bought super nice stuff nice pole nice system it was going to be great the extra hose attachments everything she didn't bother to learn the process she just sent it with her guys they assembled it at the hospital and then cleaned the windows they got done with the hospital two-day project and the people complained because A, she didn't set the system up. B, they didn't know what they were doing. They just kind of were like, oh, I think it's like this. And they were like, oh my gosh, this is garbage. We got to redo this entire hospital. I can't believe we wasted all this money. No, you did it wrong, right? It's the same concept as if you brought a squeegee, you handed it to somebody in the street, and you said, hey, squeegee that window. It would look horrible. It would look horrible. People go, wow, I really got to practice. I'm not good at that. But water fed because they don't believe or understand what it does. They do it and go, well, that doesn't work. What? No. If you drive a car into a tree, you don't go, well, I'll never drive a car again. That car goes right into trees, right? So you have to do it right. But water fed's a game changer. If you're not in water fed and you want to make more money, you want to be faster, easier, safer, all that fun stuff, get water fed. I'm not even telling you to buy it from me, which would be great. But just get into water fed. If you find a used system, we get people to do that all the time. By the way, on a side note, if you ever do find a used system, not all of them are awesome, but if you can find a used RODI, sometimes people find like a zero pure tucker or something. You want to buy it at half the price of new. That'll give you enough uh, room to replace all of the filters because you have to assume all of the filters need replacing. So keep that in mind. Um, but Waterfed's a game changer for sure. Uh, now we're going to the top four, which are some of the biggest literal life-changing um, things I wish I knew. And one is always be hiring. ABH, when you get into having employees, you always have to be hiring. If you hire and go, we're good, and then you go and clean, someone will leave. Someone will quit. They will get fired. They will buy, find another job. They will go on unemployment. They will just do anything but work for you. People, you are attached to your business like it's your child. They are not. They're employees. They only are attached to the signature that's on their check and then it just happens to be you right now. Yes, there are good employees who have some kind of loyalty, but if you said to them, hey, I'm going out of business, they'd be like, oh man, that sucks. I got to find a new job. They'd find a new job. But if you said to yourself like, oh, I got to close the doors, it would be devastating. You'd be like, oh my God, everything I've worked for, right? They don't feel like you do about your business. It's lost of words there, but you know what I'm saying. Always be hiring. Don't wait until you need somebody to hire because then it's going to be too late and the process takes too long. Always be hiring. Always be looking for candidates. Always be getting people in and saying, hey, we don't have a position right now, but I want to keep you or rotating. You got people who aren't super awesome. Put somebody else in. Put a new person in. Let them train it. And then out of them, you let somebody else go for the new person, right? You're not here to make people uh, your friends in that realm if they're not doing what they need to do. If you have people, you're not afraid to have somebody terminated if they need to be. I've had garbage, garbage employees in my day. I've had great ones. But a lot of times, if you're not always hiring, you ha they have you by the short hairs. You're like, oh, it's too busy. I can't fire them. So you're stuck dealing with these POS people. Always be hiring. It's huge. Another one, and this could be number one, because a lot of us don't understand it and it tells us the story of our entire business. But it's that we are a luxury. We're a luxury. We're not a necessity. We're not a need. We're not when the little old lady goes, oh, 
I really like my windows. And you go, oh, you know what? I'll do it for free. She needs it done. No, we're a luxury. If you want to discount somebody, awesome. I'm never telling you to change the way you're doing things in that realm. I'm just telling you. I've done a lot of jobs for free. The little old ladies always got a deal. I always talk to them, especially if they were, um, you know, homebound, maybe didn't have family, love to just talk. I love doing that. But understand that in a business, there is nothing that we do that has to get done. Even in a commercial project, we have route has to get done or no one will shop there, right? But we don't have to do it. They could do it themselves. They could just hope that no one sees. There's a lot of businesses that haven't cleaned their windows in a long time. Trust me. No one needs what we do. We are a luxury. So if we're a luxury, everything we do has to be connected to that being a luxury. The experience has to blow them away. It's not what you're doing. It's how you're doing it. The experience, the money. I don't ever feel bad for charging what we charge to clean windows. People go, oh, man. Wow, you're done already? Man, that's like 200 bucks an hour. It is. We're always hiring. Ha, ha, ha. And he goes, ha, ha, ha. And he pays us. Like, the job, if I had a magic wand when it was all said and done, I would just go, boop, bitty, bop, bitty, boop, give me my money. Until that happens, though, I'm not having a problem being efficient. I'm never going to put a project together, big commercial project, get all done and be like, oh, that's uh, uh, $16,820. I'm never going to look at that number and go, oh, gosh, that's so much money, man. Maybe... Maybe I'll go like 13, maybe. If that's the price, that's the price. If I give them the price and they go, oh, that's too much. I go, okay, well, if anything changes, let me know. You're a luxury business. They have to have it done. Will there be somebody who comes in under you? Yes. Will there be somebody who's always cheaper than you? Yes. But you have to be able to sell them on why you're the price you are. If you didn't, they're going to go with the cheapest. There are places you need three bids and they will always take the cheapest. Fine. Race to the bottom. I had two companies in my one area who were racing on a job. It was actually a city contract. Racing, and, and I, you could see a city contract is public knowledge. You can see because the city paid for it, right? And I could see, 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 see. Every year it would go down by like $1,000, $1,200 because one year he'd have it, the next year the other guy'd have it. next, And they would just keep putting lower bids because they knew that they would go and boom. All of a sudden, it was like $7,000 less than it was like five years prior. I put my name in the hat because the one guy uh, ended up uh, having to be removed from a building by the fire department because he did something wrong. I put my name in the hat uh, at the original price. The other guys, you know, they didn't even bid in it. It put me in and that's where the price was then starting. So now all of a sudden you have a price of X amount. That's $7,000 away from the other one. And he's still trying to race to the bottom, but the other guy's not there. He's going to lose money. Eventually he has to get back. So we are a luxury. Treat everything like that. Another one that uh, I really wish I knew, and this is going to save you thousands of dollars, is an S-Corp. I'm not going to go into it because I'm not a tax dude. Talk to your tax advisor about becoming an S-Corporation. An S-Corp. Filing is an S-Corp. It will save you so much money. I promise you. It saved me my first year, and I did not do it for 20, no, 16, 15 years. All of a sudden, my accountant, new accountant, was like, why aren't you an S-Corp? I was like, huh? It saved me literally the first year like $6,800 in taxes be an escort. Don't take my word for it. Talk to your tax advisor. And finally, no one cares about window cleaning. This is a hard one because so many people, so many people are focused on, we clean the best window. Everything's perfect. It's, but they just want the window clean and clean is going to happen regardless if you do it or you not, you don't, you cannot tell me and Joe Blow over here, well, why should I choose you? And you go, well, I clean a better window than Joe Blow. They go, what? You can't sell on that because it's assumption they're both going to be clean. People don't look through the glass. They look for it to be cleaner. Now, if you do garbage work, yeah, they're going to see that. If you don't do garbage work and it's good, but you're not, your main focus isn't on that, blow them away with the experience. The experience will let them remember you a clean window is an assumed. If they hire a window cleaning company, they're all going to do the exact same. You cannot clean a window more. Clean is a term that is an absolute. If something is clean, it's clean. Something can't be clean, and then they come by and make it cleaner. If it's not clean, that means you're leaving streaks and garbage and horse sneezes on the window, right? That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is so many people focus on the clean. We do such great work. We're so clean. We clean that window so good. 
you're focused on the wrong thing. So I would go back and tell myself, because I remember there were so many times I spent an extra hour at a house because it's, ah, it's just getting perfect. And it people don't care. So no one cares about window cleaning. I'm going to go over the list one more time real quick. Don't do free stuff. Delegate to specialists. Gear is ridiculously important. No soap and towels. Easier equals faster. Efficiency equals money. Uh, water fed is a game changer. Always be hiring. We are a luxury. Get yourself as an S Corp. And finally, no one cares about window cleaning. That's the list. 10 things I wish I knew when I started this business. Uh, anyway. I'm going to shamelessly plug myself one more time, and I am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com. That is why I am here, to help people and to sell people stuff when they want it, right? That's how I make my cheddar. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I get credit for the sale, and that is how I make my cheddar. That's how I can afford all these fancy stickers. No, that's not how I can afford my fancy stickers. It's because I'm subscribed to the America Window Cleaner Magazine. That's how I get all the stickers. But anyway, my number, cell phone, save it in your phone. Jersey, I'm the only Jersey you know. It's 862-312-2026. Email is jersey at windowcleaner.com. Call me, text me, whatever. Tell me everything's in. If you're logged in, just throw it in your cart and tell me and we will go there. I'm going to verify an address and a card and you are good to go. I hit go instead of you hit go. You get an awesome sticker, right? The Cool Kids stickers, which are embedded on this side too. Anyway, new Cool Kids sticker. It is a hologram because why not? Uh, Actually, there is one, right? Where am I? Right there. That's the new uh, hologram sticker. Because we can. So Get yourself a sticker. Tell me you want a sticker. Tell me you watch the show. I'll get you a sticker in your order. And yeah, definitely go out there. Make sure to subscribe to American Window Cleaner Magazine, awcmag.com if you want a sticker, buy them. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.